Welcome to the captivating world of ancient Egypt, where the sands of time conceal the extraordinary life of one of history's most illustrious rulers, Ramesses the Great. As we journey back in time, we unravel the enigmatic tapestry of this pharaoh's reign, marked by grandeur and conquest. The legacy of Ramesses II, the legendary pharaoh who left an indelible mark on the sands of Egypt. How did he transform a kingdom into an empire, and what made him truly great? If you are new here, subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notifications of the upcoming videos. Let's get started. Ramesses II, often referred to as Ramesses the Great, was a towering figure in the annals of ancient Egyptian history. Ramesses I reigned only two years, and his son, Seti I, reigned from 1290 to 1279 BCE. It was Seti I who was the real founder of the greatness of the Ramesids. Before his death, Seti I appointed his son, Ramesses II, as a crown prince. His reign, which spanned over six decades in the 13th century BCE, left a persisting mark on the land of the pharaohs. Renowned for his military prowess, monumental building projects, and prolific inscriptions, Ramesses II stands as one of the most celebrated and enduring pharaohs of the New Kingdom period. His legacy is enshrined in colossal statues, awe-inspiring temples, and the famous Battle of Kadesh, a testament to the power and grandeur of his rule. Ramesses II hailed from a non-royal family that ascended to power in the aftermath of Akhenaten's religious reforms, 1353 to 1336 BCE. The Akhenaten era had witnessed a decline in Egyptian influence in Asia, a trend Ramesses' family sought to reverse. His father, Seti I, quelled the uprising of regional leaders in Palestine and southern Syria and engaged in a conflict with the Hittites of Anatolia to regain control over the northern provinces. Seti I initially made headway against the Hittites, though his gains proved fleeting. By the end of his rule, the Hittites had firmly established themselves at Kadesh, a formidable fortress along the Arantes River, serving as a pivotal point on their southern frontier. During his reign, Seti I bestowed a unique status upon his crown prince, Ramses, who would later become Ramses II by appointing him as regent. Seti I not only provided Ramses with a regal household and harem, but also allowed the young prince to accompany him on military campaigns. This early exposure to kingship and warfare was instrumental in preparing Ramses for sole rule. Remarkably, Ramses was designated as a successor at a remarkably young age, indicating a deliberate effort to secure his future ascension. At just 10 years old, he held the rank of captain in the army, an honorary title that likely included military training. Due to his family's residence in the Nile River Delta and the strategic importance of a base for Asian campaigns, Ramses embarked on constructing a grand residential city named Pararamasu, meaning House of Ramses. This city was renowned for its well-planned layout, featuring lush gardens, orchards, and serene waters. Notably, each of its four quarters was overseen by a distinct deity, with a clear influence from Asian deities reflecting Ramses' own inclinations towards these foreign gods. Upon ascending to sole rule, Ramses II's first official act was to visit Thebes, the prominent southern capital, during the grand religious festival of Opet, this event marked the ceremonial visit of the god Amon of Karnak, who embarked on a stately voyage aboard his ceremonial barge to reach the Luxor Temple. Upon his return to the northern region, Ramses halted his journey at Abydos to pay homage to Osiris. During his visit, he also organized the continuation of the construction of a grand temple initiated by his late father but left incomplete due to the former king's passing. Additionally, Ramses seized the opportunity to appoint a new high priest of Amman in Thebes, selecting Nebwenenef, who previously held the esteemed position of high priest of Anur in the nearby city of Thenis. Ramses II's legacy as a remarkable king was not solely built on his extensive construction projects and the renowned city of pur His subjects predominantly revered him for his military prowess, in the fourth year of his reign, Ramses embarked on a campaign to the north to reclaim the territories that his father had been unable to conquer definitively. The initial objective was to quell rebellious local dynasts in southern Syria, securing a stable foothold for future advancements. 
he established a commemorative inscription at the al Kab River near Beirut to document the campaign's events, though today only his name and the date have endured, and the rest has eroded over time. The subsequent year marked the commencement of the principal expedition, with Kadesh, a formidable Hittite stronghold, as its target. The army followed the coastal route through Palestine and Lebanon, eventually halting in the southern region of the land of Amor, possibly close to Tripolis. At this juncture, Ramses dispatched a specialized task force, responsible for securing the seaport of Samira, and then proceeding up the Eleutherus River Valley to rejoin the main army stationed at Kadesh. The primary force continued its march to the Orontes, with the army organized into four divisions, encompassing charioteers and infantry, each likely comprised of around 5,000 men. The Egyptian army crossed the river, moving from east to west at the Shabtuna Ford, approximately eight miles from Kadesh. As they traversed a wooded area, they emerged onto the plain facing the city. Ramses received misleading information from two captured Hittite spies, suggesting that the primary Hittite army was situated at Aleppo, further to the north. Consequently, it appeared that only the Kadesh garrison posed a threat. It was not until the Egyptian forces began arriving at their campsite near Kadesh that Ramses discovered the main Hittite army was concealed behind the city. Ramses swiftly dispatched messengers to expedite the arrival of his remaining troops. However, before further action could be taken, the Hittites, with a force of 2,500 chariots, each carrying three men, as opposed to the Egyptian chariots accommodating two, launched a sudden assault. The leading Egyptian divisions caught entirely off guard, fractured and fled in disarray, leaving Ramses and his small household chariotry unit, completely encircled by the enemy, engaged in fierce combat. Fortunately, at the critical juncture of the battle, the Samira task force arrived on the battlefield, allowing it to join forces with the main Egyptian army and avert a disaster. The outcome of the battle resulted in a tactical victory for the Egyptians as they maintained control of the battlefield. However, it proved to be a strategic setback as they failed to capture Kadesh. Given the exhausted state of both armies, an armistice was reached and the Egyptian forces headed back home. The Battle of Kadesh stands out as one of the few battles from ancient Egypt with well-documented details, largely due to the king's pride in his courageous stand against overwhelming odds. Accounts of the campaign, including an official record and epic poem, were inscribed on the temple walls in Egypt and Nubia, and the poem was also preserved on papyrus. The Egyptian failure to capture Kadesh had consequences for their prestige abroad. Some of the smaller states in South Syria and northern Palestine, which were under Egyptian reign, rebelled. In response, Ramses had to fortify the northern boundaries of Egypt's Asiatic territory before attempting to challenge the Hittites once more. In his eighth or ninth year of reign, Ramses successfully captured several towns in Galilee and Amur. The following year, he was once again at the al Kab River. It was possible in the 10th year of his reign that he managed to breach the Hittite defenses, conquering Katna and Tunip. During an unexpected Hittite attack in Tunip, Ramses bravely endured battle without his armor. He held these towns long enough for a statue of himself as overlord to be erected in Tunip. In further advances, he invaded Kode, a region possibly located between Alexandretta and Karchemish. Despite these territorial gains, like his father before him, Ramses found it challenging to maintain control over areas so distant from their base under continual Hittite pressure. After 16 years of intermittent hostilities, a peace treaty was finally reached in 1258 BCE. This treaty was negotiated as an agreement between equal great parts, and its terms were mutually reciprocal. Following the conclusion of their wars, both nations developed amicable relations. Regular exchanges of diplomatic correspondence became a common practice. In 1245 BCE, Ramses solidified this newfound friendship by marrying the eldest daughter of the Hittite king. Subsequently, he may have entered into a second marriage with another Hittite princess. Beside the conflict with the Hittites, punitive expeditions were carried out against Edom, Moab, and Negev. A more significant conflict arose against the Libyans, who repeatedly attempted to invade and settle in the Delta region. Ramses likely took an active role in the war against the Libyans, although he did not personally lead the minor expeditions. 
The latter part of Ramses' reign had been relatively peaceful, marked by a lack of major conflicts. Ramses II's reign is a testament to Egypt's prosperity, evident in the extensive temple construction projects undertaken during his rule. Even considering the extraordinary length of his reign, his achievements in this regard are unparalleled in Egyptian history. His accomplishments in both warfare, as depicted in these temples, and temple building earned him the nickname The Great from the 19th century Egyptologists. This title was more fitting as his subjects and posterity regarded him as the ultimate king. Nine rulers from the 20th dynasty, 1190 to 1075 BCE, chose his name for themselves. Even during the subsequent period of decline, claiming descent from him was an honor, and his people affectionately referred to him as Sese. In Egypt, Ramses II's architectural endeavors included the completion of the vast hypostyle hall at Karnak and the continuation of his father, Seti I's temple work at Abydos. He finished the funerary temple of his father in Luxor on the west bank of the Nile and constructed his own, known today as the Ramesseum. In Abydos, he erected his own temple close to that of his father. Additionally, within his residence city, he built four significant temples alongside various smaller shrines. In Nubia, located near Nilotic Sedan, Ramses II constructed no less than six temples with the two carved into the cliffside at Abu Simbel being the most splendid and renowned. These temples feature four colossal statues of the king and are awe-inspiring. Seti I initiated the larger of the two, but it was primarily executed by Ramses, while the other temple was solely attributed to Ramses. Additionally, one of Ramses' notable secular projects was the excavation of a well in the eastern desert situated along the path to the Nubian gold mines. Regarding Ramses' personal life, scant information is available. His first and possibly favored queen was Nefertiti, to whom the smaller temple at Abu Simbel is dedicated. She appears to have passed away relatively early in his reign, and her impressive tomb in the Valley of the Queens at Thebes is well documented. Among the other queens whose names have been preserved are Isenafre, who bore the king four sons, including his eventual successor, Merneptah, Meritamun, and Matnefrur, the Hittite princess. In addition to his official queen or queens, Ramses II maintained a large harem, following the customary practice, and he took great pride in his extensive family, which included over 100 children. The most renowned portrait of Ramses II is a remarkable statue of him as a young man, now on display at the Egyptian Museum in Turin. His mummy, preserved in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, reflects the visage of an elderly man with a long slender face, a prominent nose, and a robust jaw. The reign of Ramesses II represents the culmination of Egypt's imperial might. Following his passing, Egypt assumed a more defensive posture, maintaining control over Palestine and neighboring regions until the latter part of the 20th dynasty. Egypt's influence beyond its borders gradually waned due to the incursion of belligerent sea peoples into the Levant. Ramses II's military prowess, notwithstanding the setbacks at Kadesh, enabled him to make deep incursions into the Hittite Empire in the ensuing years. He also displayed competence as an administrator, overseeing a prosperous nation and enjoying widespread popularity. Additionally, Ramses II was adept at self-promotion as evident by the ubiquitous presence of his name and accounts of his battlefield achievements throughout Egypt and Nubia. Thank you for joining us on this exhilarating expedition through Ramesses the Great, Pharaoh of Ancient Egypt. Please hit that like button if you found this video as intriguing as we did. Subscribe to our channel to never miss another fascinating archaeological revelation. If you have thoughts, questions, or insights, drop them in the comments below. And of course, remember to share this video with fellow history enthusiasts.